In this uh, next problem, we have an object that is suspended by cords, as shown in the diagram below. And when an object is suspended, it generally means that the object is not moving. And then the question states that the tension in the two cords is 250 newtons, and we want to find the weight of the object. Okay, so for these kind of problems, uh, these are basically translational equilibrium problems. Um, first thing that we have to do is draw a free body diagram. And then once we draw a free body diagram, we want to construct a triangle and use the concept of translational equilibrium, which basically means the sum of the forces is equal to zero, which also means that the object is not moving. Okay, so for our free body diagram, uh, we have a force acting in this direction caused by the tension in the rope. So we'll call this the force tension, and I'll call this force tension one. And that's because we have another force over here on this side of the rope, and we'll call this the second uh, uh, tension in the rope, so FT2. And then the object, which is right here, uh, this also has weight, so it has a force of gravity um, going in the downwards direction. All right, so there is our free body diagram, and then from our free body diagram, we wanna go ahead and construct a triangle so that we can go ahead and use the concept of translation, translational equilibrium. Okay, so if I go ahead and draw a free body diagram, so uh, here's my first uh, tension in the rope. So I'll label this as force tension one. And I'll put a little uh, vector hat there. And then we also have a force of gravity and that's going down. So here is my force of gravity vector with the hat there. And then uh, we have our second tension in the rope which goes in this direction. And I'll label that as FT2 with the vector hat there. Okay, and then once uh, now that we've drawn our uh, vector diagram, once again, this is just illustrating that the sum of the forces acting on this particular object is equal to zero because we're essentially adding all three of these vectors together. So in some of the previous homework questions, uh, sometimes I'll just label this as FT1 plus the force of gravity plus the force, the force tension two vector. And since I'm adding this from head to tail, and since we start and end at the same position, um, um, the, all the forces are acting acting to zero there. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and, and start labeling the triangle now with some numbers now. So uh, the force of gravity, so if I go back to the original problem here, uh, um, we need to find the weight of the object, right? So what I'll do here in my diagram here, I'll label this as just FG because of that I need to find the magnitude of the weight there. And the force tension in each rope is 240, 250 newtons. So I'll label this as 250, 250 newtons. And then I'll erase that and I'll label this as 250 as well. Okay, and another thing we have to do here is we need to consider the angles here. So there's 40 degrees. So uh, if I go to my triangle here, uh, so basically this is kind of like your 40 degrees right there. That's how this would translate to the triangle. And if that's 40 degrees, then uh, down here, this would also be 40 degrees. Okay, and then uh, if we have 40 degrees over here on this side, uh, the way we would translate that to the diagram, um, basically if I use a purple marker here, that 40 degrees would be down here. So this would be 40 degrees. So that's 40 degrees, then over here, this is also 40 degrees using the um, alternate interior angles property. And then that's 40 degrees, and this has to be 50 degrees. All right, so 40 plus 50 is 90 degrees. Okay, so uh, there's our triangle there. Let me go ahead and just erase some of this now. And uh, we can see right here that 40 plus 40 is gonna be 80, so I'll erase this now. And I know this is gonna be 80 degrees. If this is 80 degrees and this is 50 degrees, then uh, this will also be 50 degrees over here and that will give us 180 degrees for this particular triangle. Okay, so those are my numbers here and uh, let's go ahead and now solve for FG using the sine law. So if this is 80 degrees right here, uh, and if I go directly opposite to, to that angle, we can use the sine law here. So this would be sine of 80 degrees. And we're gonna divide that by the force of gravity. And then this is gonna equal two. Then we can use any angle here so that's, that's left over. So here's 50 degrees. And if I go opposite to the 50 degrees, I have 250, right? So in order to set that up on my uh, sine law here, I, I write down sine of 50 degrees and then I divide that by its opposite side, which is 250. And that's how you use the uh, sine law for this particular question. And our goal is to solve for FG here. So let's go ahead and just do like a, a uh, crisscross uh, type of technique here. So the sine of 80 degrees would remain. And then I'm gonna multiply that with the, the 250. And then that's gonna equal to uh, sine of 50, which remains. 
and then the force of gravity it was on the denominator on the left hand side so now I can move it to the numerator on the right hand side and then we need to get rid of this sine 50 by dividing both sides by sine 50 so I can divide this side by sine 50 and then once I do that then this is gone and then I just have FG on the right hand side so I'll move this over and complete that as the force of gravity okay so then uh, after that you would just go to a calculator now and then you would uh, go ahead and type in sine 80 times 250 divided by sine 50 and once you do that you get about 321.393 newtons and if you want to round this down to uh, two significant figures uh, 320 newtons would be equal to your force of gravity for this particular problem Let's go ahead and do another similar problem here. So for this particular problem, we have a traffic sign which is hanging from two cables. So the two cables are here and there. And uh, for this particular problem, it tells us that the tension in, in each cable is 220 newtons and we wanna find the weight of the sign. So very similar to the previous problem. So step number one is we wanna draw a free body diagram. So here is a force and the tension right there. So I'll call that FT1. And then we also have another force on this side of the, the rope or the cable here. So we'll call this force tension two. And then to complete the free body diagram, the sign has a weight, so we'll call that FG acting in the downwards direction. So there's our free body diagram. Uh, after that, we wanna construct a triangle and the concept that we wanna use is that the sum of the forces is gonna be equal to zero. Okay, so if I just move over here, let's go ahead and draw another triangle here. So here is, uh, the force tension right here, so FT1 with the vector sign, and then the force of gravity is acting in the downwards direction, so this is a force of gravity with the vector sign, and then finally the last vector right here is the tension in the second row, which is FT2 with the vector sign. Okay, so I'm gonna kinda skip out on some of the notation here, uh, especially with the uh, vector, um, um, I'm, gonna, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna skip some of the, uh, just the, uh, adding the vectors here to show that this equals to zero. But uh, what I want to do now here is uh, if I take a look at uh, this original problem, the question tells us that the tension in each cable is 250, right? So that's 250 and that's 250, right? So if I go to my diagram here, I can erase this and erase that. And we know this is 250 and we know this is 250. And uh, essentially when two sides of a triangle are equal, we, we basically have an isosceles triangle. Okay, so in my previous question here, uh, if, if this was 35 degrees, um, that's kind of corresponding to this part right here, which is 35 degrees, right? So if that's 35 degrees, uh, we can simply just go uh, 90 minus 35, and then we can easily get the 55 degrees over here, okay? And if that's 55 degrees, then this automatically has to be 55 degrees because we're dealing with an isosceles triangle. And basically an isosceles triangle just means that uh, if these two sides are equal, then these two bottom angles are equal. So if this is 55, then that has to be 55. Okay, so we can kind of uh, skip all, on some of that. And um, once we have 55 degrees and 55 degrees, um, 55 plus 55 is gonna be 110. So that what that means is we have 70 degrees left over here. And our goal now is we wanna find the weight of the sine, which is the force of gravity over here. Okay, so let's go ahead now, jump into the sine law here. So if this, if this is 70 degrees, we always go to its opposite side. So now we have sine of 70 degrees, and we're gonna divide that by the force of gravity. And then that's gonna to equal to any other angle here. So let's just use this angle here in the bottom, 55 degrees, and its opposite side is 250. So I can write that as sine of 55, and we can divide that by 250. All right, so a very similar setup to the previous problem. So we can do a little crisscross here and here. So if I do that correctly here, I got sine of 70 degrees, put that in a bracket, and then we're gonna multiply that by 250 from the bottom uh, right-hand denominator, and that's gonna equal to uh, sine of 55 over here. And then we're gonna multiply that by the force of gravity. Okay, and then from there we can divide both sides by the sine of 55 degrees. So I'll divide the um, both sides by sine of 55 degrees here. And essentially what's happening is uh, this and this cancels off. 
and you're just left with the force of gravity on the right hand side so let me just kind of move the force of gravity over here and now you can just jump to your calculator now and get the correct answer here so uh, if I multiply uh, sine of 70 sorry if I multiply uh, sine of 70 by 250 divided by sine of 55 the answer that I do you get is a uh, 252.374 four newtons and once again if you want to round this down to two uh, significant figures 250 newtons is also okay All right so uh, both answers are acceptable in this case All right, here's another uh, similar example. Uh, in this case, we have a 110 kilogram object and it's supported by two ropes attached to the ceiling and we wanna find the tension T in the right hand rope. All right, so we wanna find uh, this tension over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw a free body diagram. So here is my force tension, I'll call that FT1. I'll call this uh, FT2. And we also have a force of gravity down here, I'll label this FG. All right, so uh, there's our free body diagram. And uh, from here on, uh, we do need to construct a triangle. But before I do that, let's work with the force of gravity over here. So we know the force of gravity is equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. And let's just go ahead and change this 110 kilograms into its weight. So 110 times 9.80. And if I go ahead and multiply that out, I should get uh, 1,788, sorry, 1,078 newtons. And now I have all the right units here now to go ahead and construct my triangle. Okay, so if I go ahead and draw a triangle here, uh, I'll call this the uh, force of tension, which is what I wanna find. And then we have our force of gravity, which is going the downwards direction. And then we also have our second force of tension, which is right there. All right, so normally I would draw the vector signs and all that, but I'm gonna just kind of skip out on that in this case. Uh, let me erase my force of gravity and know this is equal to uh, 1078. So let's go ahead and plug that in right away. And let's go ahead and start working with these angles here. Okay, so I have 25 degrees here, right? So on my diagram right here, on my triangle diagram here, we know this is gonna be the 25 degrees. Uh, if that's 25 degrees, you should go ahead and find this inner angle here, and you can do that by taking 90 minus 25. And if you do min 90 minus 25, you should get 65 degrees right there. Okay, and then the other angle you wanna work with here is this 60 degrees. So you need to carefully think about where is that 60 degrees on the triangle. And uh, it's roughly over here. So if I draw a horizontal line here, the 60 degrees is right there. Okay. And uh, one more thing I should have done in my previous angle is that um, I know over here uh, this was 25 degrees, right? So if that's 25 degrees, using the alternate interiors angle constant, we know that this angle and this angle are the same, so this is going to be 25 right there. Okay, and that's really helpful there because once you have the 25 and the 60, you can simply just add these two angles together. So 60 plus 25 is going to be 85. So I know this entire angle here is going to be 85 degrees. And then once you know that angle, you can definitely find this bottom angle by simply taking 180, subtracting the 65, subtracting the 85, and you should get uh, 30 degrees down here. All right, and now you have enough information to find the tension on the right-hand side, which is FT1. Okay, so I recommend that uh, we should go after, uh, let me use a green marker this time. So if I have 85 degrees, we should always go to its opposite side. So this will be sine of 85 degrees and we're gonna divide that by 1078 which is the opposite side and then we're gonna make that equal to another ratio so um, what I see here is I have my 30 degrees and then that points to the opposite side which is FT1 right so now I can write sine of 30 degrees all right so it's always angles angle divided by the the length of the side and the length of the side here is gonna be FT1 Okay, so now we have a very similar problem, uh, similar to the previous two questions where we just solved for this. And uh, let's just go ahead and uh, highlight the denominators there and we'll just uh, kind of crisscross them. So if I do that, uh, I'll, I'll use a blue color this time. So I have sine of 85 and I'm gonna multiply that by FT1. And that's gonna equal to sine of 30 degrees, which doesn't move, but the 1078 will move. Okay, and then our goal here is we wanna isolate for FT1, so we just we just divide both sides by sine of 85. So I'll divide this side by, this side by sine of 85. If I divide this side by sine of 85, 
then what happens is that those two those two uh, numbers will cancel out and then there you go ft1 will equal to sine 30 and then we can multiply that by 1078 and then we can also divide that by sine of 85 and if we do that we will get um, 541.06 newtons and if you want to round that down to two significant figures 540 newtons is also okay all right so there's your answer for that particular problem Here's uh, one last question for this uh, video guide here. And for this problem, we have a wire is stretched between two posts. So uh, here are my posts here and here. And a mass is suspended near the center as shown below. All right, so now the question is stating, if the tension in the wire were increased, is it possible to make the wire perfectly horizontal? Explain your answer in terms of forces. Okay, so if I take a look at the um, a sample answer here, Let's see if I can just zoom in on this one. Um, so the answer is no, it is not possible to make the wire perfectly horizontal. And since the mass has a vertical force of gravity acting on it, uh, the tension in the wire must have an opposite vertical component. So a horizontal tension has no vertical component, therefore it's not possible to make the wire perfectly horizontal. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and kind of break that down into what that kind of possibly means here. So um, what we're saying here is if I draw a free body diagram here, right? So there's the force uh, in that particular rope, which is called the force tension. And then we also have another force tension on this side of the rope. Now, if we were to stretch this out to get a horizontal rope, it would the free body diagram would then change to this and this. All right, so if I kind of drew that on the side here, here's the blue side, and then here's the purple side, right? And those two forces would be equal, right? So if this was, I don't know, 10 Newtons, then this would also be 10 Newtons. Uh, however, we still have a, um, a force acting on the mass here, which is your force of gravity, right? So if I kind of uh, put that into my free body diagram, here's your force of gravity, okay? And uh, the idea here is we kind of want to use the concept of translational equilibrium where the sum of the forces is equal to zero. And what we're saying is, yeah, the, the left-hand side and the right-hand side, they actually equal to zero, but we still have this uh, force acting in the vertical direction. So when you have these horizontal forces, there is no um, vertical component in the opposite direction of the force of gravity. I'll call this FG2. We need a force to kind of cancel out the yellow side, right? And since we don't have a second force in the opposite direction of our first um, force of gravity, it's impossible to have um, uh, the case where we have a horizontal string, right? Uh, the sum of the forces uh, will not be equal to zero uh, in this case, right? because of this uh, downwards uh, force of gravity there. And that's what this solution key is kind of saying because uh, the tension in the wire must have an opposite vertical component, right? So what that means, again, is we need to have an opposite vertical component here to cancel off with that. And since we don't have that, um, what we're saying is uh, we generally don't have the case where the sum of the force is equal to zero there. Okay, so um, once again, uh, the answer will be no. And uh, it's not possible, not possible, to uh, have the wires perfectly horizontal. Okay, so that concludes this uh, homework uh, video guide. And this uh, whole video guide kind of got, covers a few more ideas with uh, translational equilibrium, which means the sum of the forces acting on an object is equal to zero.